Hi guys, welcome to uh, another episode. Today my guest is Raji Kalara. Raji is a founder and a CEO of People Tail. Welcome to the show, uh, Raji, and uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me, Gurmeet. If you can walk us through, Raji, what is People Tail is about and, and uh, what do you guys do there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first, uh, I'm a co-founder. Uh, I do have a, a better half named Ming. Okay. And uh, Ming and I have known each other for about 10 years. And, you know, we, we're both coming from IT and retail uh, services businesses. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been working with uh, predominantly natural health retailers since 2008. Um, my first client was Whole Foods Market. Yeah. Um, when we first, we took, we actually won a, a five-year managed services contract to build in-store digital for Whole Foods. And I didn't know anything about, I knew a lot about retail, but I didn't know much about the category of where Whole Foods was. And a lot of people understand that like, today it may seem normal, but natural and organic products were still a big like if you ever went to like um, a Loblaws or a Walmart potentially mm-hmm. it was maybe like one aisle of where you would find the organic section now mm-hmm. it's you know complete departments where mm-hmm. there's actually a store within a store concept sometimes like Metro, Sobeys, Loblaws like you'll find like the natural value section which is now becoming one of the biggest destination for consumers mm-hmm. more and more consumers are getting a little bit you know they're, they're becoming much more educated but going mm-hmm. back 10, 12 years ago, um, you know, Whole Foods was really the pioneer, I find. A lot of other stores too, but we got in. I didn't know much about the, I know IT, but I didn't know much about the category. So the, the infrastructure we were building uh, for Whole Foods was um, an in-store digital managed. It was more of a, a digital display network in-store. Okay. Call it TV screens in every department. And the vision was really around you know, helping people with in-store shopping decisions, right? So mm-hmm. you're in the meat department, there will be some, you know, content playing on the screen. So Whole Foods, number one, I didn't, I didn't realize they were a very green company. They didn't want to do a lot of printing. They didn't want a lot of clutter in the store. So using mm-hmm. a centralized communication screen was good. So they didn't have to keep sending up posters and throwing things away. And it's a little bit more efficient. Mm-hmm. And, so, and then the vendors in the department could be like, you know, suppliers to the meat department, seasonings or things that would go companion with meat department would also use this as the channel that, so they can merchandise their products. You're coming to buy a steak or whatever it may be. They could talk about a recipe. They could talk about what ingredients you may want to use. Here's five minutes. Here's what you can do with a cut of meat from Whole Foods. Take it home and make this. And everything's Mm -hmm. merchandised around the area. So we, Whole Foods, we had 10 department channels, meat, seafood, bakery, but there was this magical department in the middle called Whole Body that, if anyone ever uh, went to Whole Foods and you kind of, you know, there's a running joke that you can kind of stumble around the middle of the store and all of a sudden you're around this, you know, lotions and potions. Um, <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there was a lot of this. So the, there, there was a lot of opportunity to, and I remember the first call we got from a vendor was actually someone from the Whole Foods department. Yeah. And uh, he said, Rod, like, you know, you got one of these displays and I sell this uh, probiotic. And I asked him, what? <laughs> what's a probiotic? And he goes, it's, it's, it's a yogurt that does this and it's got bacteria in it. And it's like $40 for the six pack. It's like $40. He goes, yeah, Roger, but we have to educate people of how, why they need this. And it's good for your digestive tract, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. So these were the conversations we were having early stages and that the early adoption of vendors mm-hmm. in the Whole Foods experience were relationships that I didn't realize at how far that even till today, the people that I met then, especially the vendors, are still have become friends. Mm -hmm. And we have built an entire industry based around helping brands that I met back in Whole Foods that are now, so these brands are now, these brands are part of thousands of retailers. And they're being sold online. Mm -hmm. They're on well.ca, they're on Healthy Planet, they're on Amazon, they're on Walmart, they're at every shopping destination. And I look at us, you know, fast forward to today, so what is people tell? We're still in the business of, we're, we're using digital displays. Yeah. But we're using different digital displays. It's not the in-store one. It's actually online. So the point of purchase moment is now becoming before they buy something online. Is like, can they watch and understand what these products do? And mm-hmm. we tap into where we used to tap into the brand to tell us this. Like, give us your marketing information, and we would produce content for that display. Mm-hmm. People Tale was built around a principle of let's just get other people to talk about how to use the product. And I reference. Ming in the beginning, Ming, my co-founder. So Ming's a computer engineer, but also and a dear friend of mine, but he's also, he coined a phrase of, um, 
you know, I think where e-commerce will go one day is that people will just don't want to see a product sitting against a white background. That if you do go to any e-commerce site today, that's the traditional way of what you see. Mm-hmm. What people really want to see are how are people using these products to make their life better. Yeah. Right? If you don't know what a probiotic is, why do you need it? And there's a thousand of them out there now. Which ones do you want to take? And so listening to recommendations or how-tos or thought leaders, or I don't say like to use influencers, mm-hmm. because I think there's there's a stigma around influencers that they're being paid to do something, but real life authentic people that can help be part of the shopping experience and the retailing experience. So people tell is a blend of two words, people mm-hmm. plus retail. And the idea is that, you know, we think people have the opportunity to help um, create content. So as long as another theory we have is as long as the smartphones keep by every passing year, keep getting uh, better cameras and better broadband connections, you know, we're going to be living in a world where people can create beautiful content at any time at any moment. Um, so everyone's got a, 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 a video studio in their purse or their pocket um, and they can produce content. So we tap in. So people tell taps into thousands of consumers that can create content. And we give these contents to help support e-commerce decisions. Mm-hmm. And that's the foundation of people tell we've done. We're doing, we're moving a lot more into the idea of where we think e-commerce is going to go and the fact that we think that people that where it's not a spontaneous purchase. And I think, I don't know, Gurmeet, if you've ever done the same thing. So I look at myself, if you know, you're going to go on a trip somewhere. Mm-hmm. Do you go to the resort's website and just book blindly, but you probably go to TripAdvisor or go to YouTube mm-hmm. and watch, you know, the guy that's running around the resort in a Speedo taking a video of what, what's going to be there. Yeah. Or if you're going to buy a TV, you're watching unboxing videos. Or if you're like, I bought a, I bought a Tesla and I was like, I watched every single video I could watch before mm-hmm. I even decided. And I knew... I wanted to buy it because I just, I learned so much through people. And so we think people are, but what people are doing is they're bouncing around from going to buy something like on Best Buy or Amazon. And then they're going to YouTube or going to review sites or trying to figure out and they're bouncing mm-hmm. around. And we believe people tale can be where we're starting to do integrations where mm-hmm. we can bring these contents directly into the point of purchase experience where like the product's there, but there's content merchandised around it. So back what I was saying earlier around like the whole food like, how do you merchandise stuff better? There's opportunities to bling this up. So we're a technology company focused on user-generated content, helping mm-hmm. drive e-commerce sales. I see. So if I'm a consumer on, on your site, I can pick any product and I can submit my reviews, right? right? You know, I can I can record a video, I can write a contact, so I can pick any product and write my reviews. And somebody else trying to buy the same product, they can see my review, you know, um, how I use the product and it gives them a lot of context. Um, that this is a you know the if product is good for this you know if there's any thought so they can see that my feedback and, and they can have a user experience based on my feedback is, is that how uh, the, the system works well so so people till.com itself right now that's what it started off just being a product review system anyone yeah. can just create a free account they can talk about i bought you know this is a dark uh, roast protein coffee i can say i bought this product i love it here's what i like about it you know we have a lot of nutritionists too that they just don't say, hey, I like, but they actually talk about the ingredients and its certifications and stuff. And mm-hmm. then they also educate you, where, where can you buy it? So if you can drive it to well.ca or Healthy Planet or a certain store mm-hmm. where people can buy it, it gives them an opportunity. And so what we've also mechanized is not just the review system, which is not revolutionary, but the way that people can be recognized, recognized for their efforts. Mm-hmm. So... Quality, A, so getting getting feedback on the quality of their stuff. Is it a good video? People can give, you know, kudos to people saying, hey, they agree that that's a, that's, that's a great review. So your mm-hmm. ranking goes up. Yes. Um, if you've included a video into your review system, that gives you more credibility. Mm-hmm. Um, if your review actually leads to a sale. So we, we're, we're very, very, when we integrate into certain stores, we can actually, in certain cases, we can track sales transacting between a review Mm-hmm. someone making the purchase let's say on a website yeah. and that's done through the incumbent they call it affiliate technology it's a very old school way of doing it but there's a tracking mechanism between one thing to another thing and so we can so if that led to a sale then we can say you know what you've earned um certain more points so a great people tail someone that's done a really great reviewers they rank they rise to the above yeah. and we do that and so that's that's how generally how people tell was built. So you don't have to be expert on a specific product or you don't have to be industry expert or consultant. Anybody can submit a review or, and, and they can just rank up 
um, is, is that how it works? And, and, and uh, more importantly, what's in for uh, the people who are submitting our reviews? Do they get any compensation or, or, or do they have any invested interest in it or is it just, uh, just a community? So anyone can do it, right? So we, 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 we try to stay away from influencers because there's a, big, there's a big industry of people that just want to do and promote products and get paid and then move on to the next one. There's something about authenticity that someone is actually doing the review because they want to do the review and they want to help other make a purchase. So what's in it for them? Um, it's a good question, actually. They, you know, there's, there's a community of people that I think that are, are known as educators. Okay. So a lot of people that I, I, we think a lot of people are trying to build, like, so a lot, a lot of personal trainers and a lot of, I'll say, holistic nutritionists or people that are thought leaders are trying to build a personal brand. So I'm Jennifer, I'm a nutritionist and people look to me for great, credible advice and they're helping because my job as a professional is to help people live a better life. And so when yeah. I'm out there speaking, so having, having access to products and doing good things is actually part of my job. Mm -hmm. So when the next keto trend or proteins coming out or collagen powders coming out or probiotics coming out and people are lost looking for ideas and going to Google, they would turn to someone like Jennifer as an example where she's become uh, uh, an, 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 an educator to make smart decisions. Mm -hmm. and if, but if she was being paid all the time as an influencer, then of course she'll say how amazing the product is because that's her job. So we've, we've got into a business where we don't pay. It's really about, we do do a lot of, even when brands are launching new products into the industry, a part of our business of people tales actually working with a lot of brands that if you're launching a new product, so we do a lot of sampling campaigns mm -hmm. where, so remember I talked about the gamification where, how do we know who are the best reviewers? So we have a leaderboard and yeah. we give opportunities to members of our community saying, Hey, there's a new coffee coming out. Um, we have, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 units of it. Who would like to try one of these? Mm -hmm. And they get to learn it. And then we ship them across Canada every month. And again, we're not paying, but they're, they're they'll actually take the time. Well, they'll actually get it. They'll use okay. it and they'll give a review. So for the mm -hmm. brand, it becomes a really great way to acquire good feedback right away in terms of the authenticity, the reviews, what are people saying about the product? And we've even helped some brands where they've actually made decisions around formulation, around where they can send something out. And actually, there's actually a brand I remember, I won't say who it was, but the product was faulty, that it actually wasn't saying what it was going to do. And many users caught that. And the brand didn't even know that this was going to happen. And then they pulled it before it went to market. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's a great feedback for them, right? So before they even, uh, you know, put a lot of investment in the market, you know, to, to push the product out, if they can get, a, you know, feedback for consumer, um, you know, they can use the feedback to, either, you know, improve the product or whatever they have to change the messaging, you know, at least that gives them a lot of feedback so they can work on it. Well, 100%, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So we're, so that's phase one, I think, of people tell. I think phase two is the integrations of the contents into, so being a Shopify, so we use Shopify a lot for a lot of, um, so, so we want more and more retailers to be set up online. I think the more retailers gives us more opportunity to have content eventually. Mm -hmm. So like if there's no retailers to use our stuff, then, then we're, <laughs> we're not giving it to anyone. But the more retailers out there, the better. And so we, we actually manage about a, a network of stores. I won't say how many now, but quite a lot of e-commerce stores in Canada for predominantly smaller independent stores that just outsource the e-com systems. Yeah. And we actually, where I'm sitting today, we do a lot of pick, pack, ship. Um, for their orders and we're the the advancements we're making is really about using the Shopify ecosystem to create integrations where we can create content mm -hmm. and even have host a product review system right into Shopify world so when people use Shopify they can actually have built in with a people tail product review system built in natively mm -hmm. so some of these are reviewed just on people tail those same reviews get syndicated across numerous stores as long mm -hmm. as so if this product sold across let's say 20 stores and someone's done a review on people tail Mm -hmm. It'll go across on, from people tail to appear on the product detail page mm -hmm. of 20 other stores. So it gives a way, a way to syndicate. So we're looking to really launch this. Uh, she's launching in September, actually. Mm -hmm. And we think it's going to be a great, great way to get content out to right at the point of purchase. I see. So uh, having a reviews, you know, that's been done before, but definitely you have a, a unique approach to it. You have a lot more content around just not only reviews. How does that uh, reviews, you know, the, uh, your reviews or you know, data on your site against somebody like Amazon or, or Google reviews? You know, they, they, you can write uh, uh, your contact there as well. I'm not sure if they can put a videos there as well, but you can you can write some uh, information and a contact. So, what are some of the ways that you know you the approach you guys taking is completely different than what what's happening out in uh, Amazon or, or uh, Google or uh, Microsoft Bing or uh, all those review sites? 
so it's a great question. We we so at face value, you know, you would think that reviews are reviews, but it's all about we we think deep down what what can we do to 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 make the reviewer um, part of the retail experience. So step okay. one, they can leave a review. Okay. Step two is that how do you if someone's had a good experience, how do you convert them to become helping other people buy that product and rewarding them for helping to make a purchase afterwards and helping them. So Jeff Bezos has this great quote, like, you know, he he always says your margin is my opportunity, right? So there is margin available. And we also look at that with the affiliate structures that we've been kind of accustomed to. So if someone leaves a great review for this product um, on a system and we think it's great, how do we allow them to share it? And then if they bring other people to come make a purchase back on to that merchant, can we kick them back some reward on the, on the margin that's available? So can they earn five, 10, 20% of it Mm -hmm. from a sales standpoint? And we think that is a massive opportunity because it's about them sharing content and bringing people back and simplifying that. So on Amazon, you really can't do that. On Walmart, you can't do that. You just publish your review. We're also really big into the visual aspects. So if anyone looks at peopletail.com, you know, using photos and we're really being getting bigger into videos. So we think video and video shopping is going to become natural that people just don't want to see the product. They want to see videos, mm-hmm. how to's explanations, recipe tutorials. And so if we can implement visuals plus a reward system that if someone can share and make a sale back at the merchant, what the merchant then gets is an army of people that a, are passionate are great mm-hmm. reviews can actually help create, accelerate more sales for me. And they can track the sale, like the margin that they make a little small, little reward off everyone by helping other people purchase the product. Interesting. Okay, Let, let's talk about a little bit about COVID. Did, that have, did COVID have any impact on your business? Uh, looks like, you know, when the COVID happened, a lot of retail had to go online. You guys were already online before that. Did that, um, you know, excel your sales a little more or had any impact on uh, your operations, uh, Raji? Um, we got extremely busy um, during COVID. I, there's been very, a lot of long nights, but there's a lot of stores that I think were forced to make a decision mm-hmm. on getting into e-commerce where they were a brick and mortar store. E-commerce was not really much of a, of, of an interest. Yeah. And so when we got into managed services, um, we decided to really help a lot of e-commerce, a lot of physical retailers that a, they needed e-commerce or so they needed a Shopify site. They mm-hmm. needed someone to handle the product listing, someone that can do all the pick pack ship. So we've signed up numerous retailers across Canada that are working from like all across Canada mm-hmm. that are using our Shopify technology. Well, it's their technology, but it's our it's us managing it for them, and we're managing it. But COVID has accelerated. I think that e- e-commerce is not a nice to have; it's a need to have. Mm-hmm. And even so much like putting up a site is not the like you can't you can't make a business just by putting up a website. So the the business model of teaching them how to use it, what, how, they, how they share content, what kind of, you know, how else we can help them grow their sales so mm-hmm. that their e-commerce flourishes um, each time. But yeah, COVID has, I think, helped us a lot from a business standpoint and really made, put e-commerce on the map. Mm-hmm. Where do you think uh, e-commerce is heading to, uh, even, even uh, you know, in a year down the road, you think it's going to stay that way? It's a hybrid model or, or uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on where you see that uh, the retail is going? I think long term, like I'll think, you know, I think it's hard to say things like one year out and two years out, but I think, you know, where things are going to go, speed is becoming um, like there's the, even today, like we get a lot of calls from like shipping partners are coming in where, you know, they can do things same day where like, so the acceleration of shipping speeds is natural. Amazon's kind of saying we want to be the leader in this, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of micro delivery companies now that are doing pockets in Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, where like an order can come into a site. And they can actually, we can actually ship it same day to the customer. So that's here today, mm-hmm. but that's happening now. But I look at 10 years from now, I think, you know, Ming and I talk about, you know, retailers will be more of a logistics company. Like their job is to display products and get it to the customer as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the natural evolution is that people don't care even where they really get it from. And I think even more so, I think with the advent of not just phones, but uh, like, I don't know if you've ever tried, have you ever tried any Oculus system, Grimmie? No, I haven't. Do you know what it is? No. What is it? So Facebook, it's pretty, it's a, so Oculus is a, it's a virtual reality headset gear that Facebook bought this company. 
Okay. And it's been out actually for a long time. It's actually not like futuristic. It's actually there. Okay. And Minnie and I, we bought some just for a demo for a few years ago, actually. Mm-hmm. It is some of the most magical content I've ever seen in my entire life. Like it's Im- so as if you're actually like, if you want to be like standing in the middle of Paris mm-hmm. and going to see the Eiffel tower, you're actually like 360 view, no matter which way you look, you actually think wow. you're there. Mm-hmm. And it's not, there's people that are creating this content through that. Like, it's called YouTube VR and other platforms. Yeah. And the reason I say that, that 10 years from now, this kind of content is going to become so immersive. Like you're literally going to be standing with someone to buy a car and that kind of stuff's already happening where I think, I don't know if you saw like what, um, I forgot which dealership is doing it. I think it's Toyota. Mm-hmm. Or one, it's already doing like live shopping with a salesperson. They're literally yeah. taking you around the car, walking through the car, sitting in the car, asking your questions, doing the paperwork right online and mm-hmm. you're making a purchase. Yeah. So I think the, the ability for people to learn about things um, faster I think Shopify is in a really great position because it's really about the margin opportunities. So you have brands that are selling direct. The margin is there and there's ability for people to get involved in creating content for this. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, speed of things getting to consumers is going to be really fast. So I think, you know, people being part of the retail experience is going to be massive and speed is just like people are just going to want to buy it and they don't care which shipping partner sends it to them. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it, you know what? I wanted to get your take on it. I recently interviewed Sherry. Uh, Sherry is a brand ambassador. She's, she's a brand builder in, in Asian countries. And uh, one thing she noticed that the trend in China is uh, right now, if they, you know, as they open, you know, physical store, box stores in, in China, they're not carrying any inventory, some of the stores. So you go in a, in a store just for experience, just to look at it, what they're selling. If they're selling a massage chair, you just going sitting on a, you know, a few uh, different chairs and just get experience how it's going to feel. But they're not giving you a chair when you walk out of the store. Um, you know, they ship it to you from their e-commerce store. Um, so no inventory in the store, just for experience. And then you walk out and uh, they will ship it to you the same day as soon as you paid for it. And, uh, you know, you, you got experience, uh, uh, you know, using the chair, how you want to use it. But the delivery system still e-commerce because that's where the delivery comes from. You see that kind of trends coming to Canada as well. Absolutely. That I, I've got a lot of clients that do business here, but they have business in, in China mm-hmm. and they're in a different, so they use a very closed, I won't say closed system, but they're using like WeChat, WePay, they use very different systems and there it's all tied into a wallet yeah. and you're there in the store from a showrooming's perspective, you scan something you want it and it will show up to your house that day. Like it's already ah. been shipped. So you're not, it's a much more leaner there. And actually they invest a lot more into the product educator. So if you go there, there's someone they're talking about the product. So they invest more into that kind of showrooming on the spot where someone can make a beauty person. Actually brands have ambassadors or reps that are just there to help. Yeah. And you place the order and that product will be shipped to you as fast as possible. So mm-hmm. instead of them putting a lot of inventory and keeping it, and that's where like a lot of the costs come from because you need a lot of space for this. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have a lot of space, you can put into now both speed and efficiencies and getting products to customers mm-hmm. as fast as possible. Like this is, this is inevitable. Like this mm-hmm. thing, retail is going to change into being showrooming quite a bit. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of these big department stores, um, like I look at malls and the space that they take and the time that, again, I think there's a leisure aspect of wanting to walk through and spend time and go, you know, Experience. but I think there's a lot of time mm-hmm. where a lot of this stuff is just dead space now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people don't, you know, the, the rents that people are paying are massive. So maybe you don't need such a big space. Maybe it's half the space or a quarter space or what t- a tenth of it where just a showrooming things and talking to people about it, and that thing will just show up to your house. Interesting. Let's talk about delivery system uh, uh, on your side, Raji. You know, what do you guys use for delivery system? You know, you guys don't have a warehouse like Amazon does. Uh, you guys are using a Shopify, just uh, get it consu- from a consumer and deliver it the same day. How do you guys, uh, you know, get around the delivery system? Right, so we use two tiers. So we're, I'll, I'll use two, two naming conventions for now. We call it first mile, last mile. So okay. where I'm sitting today is more of a consolidation center. Um, we we're on we sell over ten thousand products that are consolidated from here. So we've got quite a few brands that are in our physical space today here, but we also aggregate. So we are first mile for us is that we like a lot of these Shopify retailers that we manage. Um, we work with some really great distribution partners that are all local in the, in the GTA. We've IT connected their uh, their catalogs into our systems. Mm-hmm. We sell them across retailers across Canada, and so first mile is that. Um, we use shipping partners that every time we make a sale, we bring that product into our warehouse into Pickering 
Ontario, mm -hmm. um, okay. hopefully next business day. And then we ship it out to, to that's, that's called first mile. So we're a lot of first mile systems and we're actually agnostic. We don't have our own shipping partner. We use different preferred partners mm -hmm. depending on where we're bringing things in from. And then last mile, um, we've partnered with um, Freycom, which they run a division called ClickShip. Okay. And so they use, um, they're our shipping partner where we can get things to the customer across Canada, actually even North America, um, agnostically. So we're using anything from UPS to Canpar to Dicom to, yeah. you know, FedEx, depending on where it's going to as fast as possible. But Freycom is really good, I think, for e-commerce retailers, specifically the ClickShip division. Okay. So it provides agnostic approach that you get really great rates mm -hmm. without having to, and then you get the bulk savings passed on to it. So if I open up my own account with UPS yeah. or with a certain vendor, you know, you're getting at the retail rates, but because they're doing, they're powering thousands and thousands of transactions, mm -hmm. we're getting bolted on to the best rates possible. And so mm -hmm. we get to take advantage of that. And we literally just click ship and we click a print, you know, we get labels printed out and the couriers come and pick up from us every day. I see. Interesting. So you have a lot of moving parts already. You know, um, by the time you get a content on a user's, you know, consumer side, you know, then you got to manage that, uh, you know, shipping side of, uh, you know, that, you know, there's so many moving parts. You guys, when you guys uh, bring a new skill, you guys think in terms of strategies and process, you know, in, in terms of that, or you guys just go uh, as an add-on basis, you know, whatever comes in a way, let's just uh, integrate that and just run with it. So is it a process approach and strategy approach to it, or is it simply just a, uh, hey, let's uh, Let's uh, take on this uh, new uh, task or let's take on this new task. Um, yeah, we've got, so we are, with e-commerce, there's not, you know, we can have set processes today, but they can change relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. Like we have new vendors that are coming in to work with us, new brands that are getting in. And so we are, our goal to get by the end of the year, number one, is that we have two goals. One, to get to, we want to manage 200 e-commerce retailers. That's our okay. internal goal. Mm -hmm. um, number two is that we also want to get to 20,000 products that we're offering across those 200 e-commerce retailers. So yeah. there's a processes that are built into acquiring new brands that are working and getting their products into integrated into our system. Yeah. That's one process since we have a data team that kind of manages that process. And then we have, we've, well, we've built our own centralized software that connects into Shopify. So we have a, we've, we call it like a product information management database. And that brain um, connects into a lot of the Shopify stuff that we do. So a new, new brand gets listed into our system, we inventory it, we catalog it, we put it into a system, and then we can get it out syndicated across a network of stores fast. Mm -hmm. and that's one. And then we're also investing into, you know, acquiring much more storefronts to sell. We call them partners um, that are looking to sell with us. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So, so tell us a little bit about your background, uh, Reggie. How do you get involved in, uh, in, uh, in uh, people tail? And, and uh, you mentioned a little bit about the wholesale foods uh, before you, you were part of that. So, um, how has your journey been, uh, you know, coming to the technology company, you know, running as a, as a IT company, then becoming, a, you know, uh, owner of the company? How, talk about your level of background. How do you get involved in this? Um, sometimes life just, <laughs> life just takes you around. You, you don't know sometimes, like, how things lead. Yeah. Um, you know, generally speaking, I've, I've been, um, you know, fortunate to work with the retailers. I've, I've had really great mentors my entire life when I first started you know in the early early days getting out of school um, you know just I think I think everyone should look at it as that it's it's working with good partners working with people that can lead you you know understanding how businesses work you know, like I look at myself as a sponge mm -hmm. and I ask a lot of questions I ask a lot of stupid questions I ask like I don't I, when I don't understand something but I think a lot of my growth has come from just being courageous to ask and never ask for help ask people like, even it may seem like the stupidest question in the world, mm -hmm. like sometimes you don't know. And, you know, sometimes, you know, like Steve, you know, Steve Jobs always said, you know, sometimes you think the world's made a certain way and like, you just think it is that, but it's, it's not. And you can build it the way you want to build it. Mm -hmm. And I think things that we think about, what I love working with Ming, my partner, is that we've kind of taken a position where we're kind of fearless. Mm -hmm. If things are a certain way, it doesn't mean it has to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And you can build it. Now, it's not, it's not saying everyone should just, you know, jump off a cliff and just kind of just just do it without asking blindly mm -hmm. you have to think about and ask surround yourself with really smart people to ask really tough questions of at the end of the day listen i, I look at the way i look at you know retail is that is that everything has a cost and mm -hmm. i keep showing this only because i'm drinking it right now but okay. everything has a cost right how it gets to a shelf what mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand is the amount of things get touched along the way 
to get it someplace? Like, how does it appear in Shopper's Drug Mart? How does it appear in mm -hmm. a certain place? And like, if you don't ask those questions of the touch points along the way, and even getting understand, so the people that create this, the cost of the product to the retail price, there's a margin disparity that was happening along the way. That happens with every single product, mm -hmm. whether it be food, supplements, beauty products, no matter what it is, you have to understand the, like the, the supply chain of what things happen. And I think that, you know, we've been through technology, there's a lot more transparency of what's happening. There's a lot more ways to get involved. And I think, you know, just, just being courageous enough to try new things is part of my DNA. And I think it's Ming's DNA is that we're both kind of very fearless on what we think is where we think things are going to go. And so, but a bit, you know, being, being in retail for such a long time, I think we're really well positioned to kind of take our learnings for the first decade mm -hmm. and really springboard it into the future of where we think everything's going to go. Mm -hmm. What has been one of the, some of the biggest challenges you have to guys you have to overcome uh, already, you know, uh, a product wise or, or service better or just personal level, uh, you know, what are some of the challenges that you guys have to get through? It's a good question. Um, Every business owner, you know, there, there's a, uh, you know, starts to prove it, you know, when you're building a business or you're building a company, you have to go through a lot, you know, you have to sacrifice a lot, you know, there's, you know, as you mentioned that, you know, you have to be bullish to take on some of the decisions, right? So every time you make a decision, there's an other side to it, right? So, and we all go through that. So some of the challenges, especially when you're working in a partnership, you know, uh, if you get a great partnership, that's great, but it's still, you know, together, you got to solve a lot of problems that comes in your way. And uh, sometimes those are problems that are not easy to solve. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially when you're trying to, you know, uh, bring a different product and different service to the market like you guys are. Um, educating people, you know, that's that's one of the challenges I hear from business leaders that, you know, I built a great product, I built a great service, now I have to educate the market as well. Because it's something, is we're too new in a market, you know, it's, it's not been there before that way. So those are the challenges I hear. So I'd like to hear, you know, if you have any specific challenge that you have to get through. Yeah, I, I think, I think, you know, when I turned 40 and Ming was around the same age, like we've been through some ups and downs. And I think what the things that I learned was that building really clear objectives of where we want to go together, which at the beginning, like when you're, so I'm involved in, um, as a side hobby, I, like I manage a community called the Toronto Entrepreneurs okay. Meetup Community. We have 20,000 entrepreneurs and the side thing, that's just a complete hobby that I do, mm -hmm. but I get to meet a lot of great, you know, people that are starting, taking an idea and then wanting to bring it to an execution. And I look at myself, like if I, you know, back then I did the same thing. And I looked at sometimes where there were failures, where um, when you don't ask questions up front and the clarity of the business goal, the business structure, the, what happens if you don't want to work on the business anymore? What if you want to leave? Like, you know, ideas, production, like certain things about, I think people have to be very clear. And I think earlier in my career, I was maybe a little bit too nice sometimes. And you get into partnerships around certain things and, you know, you could, when things do go south, you know, there's, there's no recourse because a lot of these things weren't decided up front. Mm -hmm. And I think the best thing I could say to every, like myself, even so I look at everything that we do is that any partnership or anything that we do um, is really, is really looked at carefully. Um, Long-term sustainability of it. It's really about the people that you want to be working. They could have, you could have people that have the best ideas in the world, but if they're not good people to work with, then you kind of decide to cut them off right away because they get, it can affect the culture, what you want to do. So Ming and I have a very long-term philosophy where I think it became part of our philosophy that we just, we just, you know, I think we both had some previous experiences where things didn't go so well, but moving into this business was really about focus, trust, you know, um, long-term objective. Um, you know, where do we want to take the company? I think that, you know, I don't know if that answers the questions, like, you know, some of the challenges, but I think that we've built it such that we're trying to mitigate a lot of more things that could go wrong by being very open. Mm -hmm. We talk about, you know, about, about challenges. We talk, and we've also surrounded ourselves with really good mentors, uh, people that we would trust and just ask a question. Like I can pick up the phone and talk to people. Listen, I'm, I'm faced with this challenge today. What would you do? And what advice would you give me? You have to be open and ask those questions. Yeah. And I think Absolutely. that's, Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no business is perfect, mm -hmm. um, but I do think there's a trust and the ability to focus and have a great, a great complementary partnership too. Like Ming's head of our, you know, our CTO, but I look at him as someone that he does a lot of things that his space is focused on the, the technical infrastructure mm -hmm. and sustainability and security of where we're going. 
And my job is really focused on client, on client development, working with the brands and the retailers that we manage, and then building great operational people in between that can help us execute the visions that we're taking. Very interesting. Wow, definitely. Very interesting. You know, I, I logged into your site and I registered just before we came and very interesting. You know, I saw the quality of the video is very good. And I saw the information was good. I think the people who were submitting your views were very quality information. And uh, I enjoyed it. I would recommend anybody who's watching it, you know, give it a try. Log into uh, your site and, uh, you know, take a look at a few reviews and, uh, you know, and uh, please give it a try and, and go from there. Very interesting, Reggie. Where can people find you? How can they connect with you if they want to learn some more about uh, People Tail or uh, you know, or, or be in touch with you? Uh, just my first name, Raji, at our website.com, peopletail.com. Okay. Um, you know, I want to give a quick plug out that I do think some of this something that's really exciting coming. Okay. Um, we are going to be launching our first public Shopify app, which is called People Tail Rewards. And People Tail Rewards is going to really help what we think also transform the way that any e-commerce retailer can get their consumers, okay. like I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. get them involved as, as representatives to help sell products and move products, but in a way that has never been seen before and so simple. Mm -hmm. And so that if you, if you sell t-shirts or shoes or, or anything, headphones, you know, the ability for people to help sell your products through a system called People Tail Rewards I think it's, we think it's going to be pretty revolutionary mm -hmm. and uh, we just received a patent uh, on it, a patent, at least on the technology of what our process um, last week. It actually took us three years. Actually, one of the, one of the, when we started the people tale, we thought about a really great idea, but it took us three years to get the patent. We just actually physically got it last week. Mm -hmm. um, but we think people tale rewards is going to be a really, really big part of way. And we think it can transform the way that people shop. So I want people to check that out in the future in the Shopify app store, mm -hmm. probably in October, I would say but that's something we're really excited about. If anyone has any questions, if people are excited about retail, e-commerce, affiliate, that kind of stuff, or user-generated content, you know, hook up at Raji at peopletail.com and I'd love to talk to them. Yeah, interesting. We definitely send out this video to all of our contacts and uh, I'll include your information below that in, in an email as well so people can just uh, click the button and they can reach out to you uh, for conversation. Fantastic. Good. Thank you so much for time, Raji. Thank you, Gurmeet. Take care. Uh, yeah, thank you. Have a good one.